Hello, it is Monday, October 16th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Monday crossword today, which means we are going to be solving what should be a fairly straightforward and themed crossword. I hope it's not too difficult because as is often the case on Monday, I, my schedule is a little bit different on Mondays and I do have less time. So hopefully this goes according to plan. It should. It's a Monday. It's meant to be gentle. And this hopefully gentle themed edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Aaron Spiller, Jake Rodkin, Overfull Hitbox, and as always, the indomitable Shoalmaster and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for their generous support. They are sustaining the series, bringing us this uh, channel. I'm very grateful to them for that. So thank you to those patrons. Thank you to everybody who's a patron of the Daily Solve. And if you'd like to become one yourself, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the link in the description field underneath the video to uh, find the bonus videos available to patrons as well as for benefactors, the Let's Check the Crosses official mug. Thank you again to everybody who's a patron. It does keep this whole thing going, so thank you. And uh, so does subscribing to the channel on YouTube. So thanks if you've done that. Do consider doing so if you enjoy these videos. And finally, there's the Daily Solve Discord chat server that can also be joined via a description field link. It's a nice, friendly chat community, so check that out as well. Um, sorry for there seems to be some sort of hammering. It must be next door. I'm not sure what's going on, but apologies if that's coming through the mic. Um, hopefully it's not. Uh, in any case, let's get on to the crossword. This is a Monday-themed puzzle constructed by Michael Lieberman, who's constructed, I think, around 20 puzzles, and Andrea Carla Michaels, who's a very experienced constructor with more than 80 puzzles to her name. So let's see what these two have cooked up for us today. It was edited, of course, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving, see how we get on with this. Rounded roofs, domes, is it as simple as that? Judo schools would be dojos, so martial arts kind of academy. Arkansas's blank mountains, are those the Ozarks? Or Ozark mountains, I think, but let's check the crosses. Stratosphere layer with a hole, famously the ozone layer, the, the hole in the ozone layer. And inlaid tile design, probably mosaic. Um, but once again, we'll check the crosses. Here we have chopsticks or a fork. What an incredibly specific way to clue or a, which I suppose this has been clued by way of being uh, uh, gold or uh, Rita Ora, I suppose. Um, this is a new one for me, chopsticks or a fork. Hunky star of Aquaman. Well, it looks like this is a thematic clue, but we don't. I don't think we need to know the theme to solve it. It's Jason Momoa. Is it spelled this way? Oops, not Jasoa. Uh, is it? No, it's an O. Oh, that looks that looks more correct to me. I think this is right. What about this? Drop in the mail. If, if you've dropped something in the mail, you've sent it. So to drop in the mail is to send. Get a closer view as with a camera, you could zoom in on your subject. And tech giant dubbed Big Blue, that's IBM for its uh, blue logo. It just disappeared. And when we see these brackets, these square brackets, uh, usually what we mean is we're creating something that is nonverbal. So just sort of a, a sound that uh, you could make with your mouth. That's often what that means. Um, and uh, poof, could be it. So you say it with your mouth, but it isn't really, um, you know, it's not speech. You're not communicate specific, communicating specific concepts. It's just an onomatopoeic sound. Closes as a jacket or travel bag. Zips it up. Orchestra woodwind oboe is an example of that. And what a landlubber likely lacks. A landlubber likely lacks uh, these legs, sea legs. So you might be uh, unsteady on a ship. Distress signal device. Um, a flare. If you're stranded somewhere, you might, if you happen to have access to a flare gun, you might launch a flare in order to signal your, your uh, location. O Canada and others. Those would be examples of national anthems. Okay. Like the odds of getting dealt a royal flush. Uh, very low. <laughs> Very low, slim, slim chances. Ancient rival of Athens, Sparta, famously an ancient rival of Athens in the classical world. Game-like paintball, but without the paint or the balls. 
I guess a oh, laser tag, I suppose. I suppose they're similar in that they're that each each game consists of two teams of people who are shooting each other with, you know, sort of I don't know if toys the right word, but with with non lethal guns for the purpose of scoring points. Pub offering for short an IPA maybe an India Pale Ale would be you could order that in a pub. Rand McNally product. Wow, right. I bet the Rand McNally Corporation is a lot smaller than it used to be. Um, but they produce maps, which I sort of remember from when I was growing up. Partner for a mama. A mama's partner would be a papa. So simple enough. Immediately on an order. ASAP, as soon as possible. Opposite of bright. The opposite of something being bright would be it being dim. And Pooh and Piglet creator would be Milne, the children's author A.A. Milne, who I think created these stories for for his children um, initially. Actress Tyler. Liv Tyler is an, is an actor, so there we go. Satirical sketch could be a skit. You could do a skit, a little humorous take on something. Dinner's main course would be, at least in North American English, the entree, although that would refer to the starter in in Europe, which is makes sense when you consider the word. Uh, hunky star of magic, Mike. Um, oh, Channing Tatum, right? Yes, I kept thinking Cinnamon. <laughs> uh, that is not his name. He is not Cinnamon Tatum. Cinnamon Tater. Uh, all right, Quaker pronoun. Oh, right. Okay, so thou I think is still used among Quakers. So English used to have um, formal and informal modes of speech like French or German or Spanish or, or many other languages, many other Europe, similar, well, I shouldn't say similar, but many other European languages. Um, but I think what basically happened in English was people, it, we sort of just dropped the informal out of caution, um, you know, because it can be sort of confusing or complicated to maintain you know, there, there are fairly intricate social rules about when you use which uh, mode of speech, or at least they can be intricate at times. And uh, I think we collectively, Anglophones, just sort of dropped the uh, the informal one uh, so that we were always addressing people with you, the formal. And, um, and that was that, and now it's gone. But the Quakers still maintain those two modes of speech, or at least you know, in certain contexts, uh, they probably don't in their just ordinary lives, but, uh, soccer stadium shout, ole, the old farmer's almanac, and sure as shooting, I mean, it looks like hokum or fo fum or, yeah, I'm not quite seeing what that is, derriere, your tush, your rear end, there we go, uh, which was sort of the one of the categories in a um, connections recently, although it didn't use either of these words for that category. Bitter criticism could be vitriol. You could uh, just let out real vitriol, bile, and hatred. Filbert or Pecan, those are nuts. And a hunky co-star of Rocky Three. I've never actually seen this, but it must be Mr. T. And Lieutenant Colonel, in fact, I think I even... Oh, I think I actually know this character's name, but I can't think of it. Uh, it's sort of a very distinctive name. Oh, well. Lieutenant Colonel's Inferior. Uh, well, actually, I guess in three letters starting with an M, it's probably major. I was going to say I don't know, but and I wouldn't know if you asked me without that M, but with that I do. This looks like a Psy essay, is it? Yes, it is a berry sent to be a superfood. It is the official superfood, alleged superfood berry of the New York Times crossword, the acai berry. Like pots made by a potter. Um, not sure I found. Let's go back up to here. The A and MoMA. So the MoMA is the Museum of Modern Art. So the A is art. 9-11 uh, responders in brief are EMTs. So that would be referring to a 911 emergency call. And uh, euro currency. Oh, I see. So it's right. It's The answer is simply euro. But this is the euro symbol. So the currency indicated by that symbol is the euro. Popular toaster waffles are Eggos, that's a brand of frozen waffle, and B, grade-wise, I suppose means basically good. Here's what I think to emailers. IMO, in my opinion, 
Um, I suppose that's email. I think of that as more of a texting thing than an email thing. But I'm sure people use it in both. Non-mainstream as music, indie. So that's one of those, at this point, very diffuse and vague terms. But but indie music could, you know, one way of using it could be to indicate non-mainstream. Uh, a boy could be a lad. And campus digs, so digs your home, which was also in a recent Connections. Uh, actually, it might have been, I think it was the same one as that, the one about about uh, rear ends and derrieres. Um, was, anyway, your digs are your home, and so on campus, that could be a dorm, a dormitory. This looks like Johnson, doesn't it? Hunky, oh, right, hunky co-star of the Fast and Furious franchise. Right, okay, so we've got, we've got, um, oh, right, yeah, so they're, they're all actors who are cl clued as hunky. I don't think I even noticed that. No, I didn't. I didn't pick up on the fact that these both use the exact same adjective, hunky. Whoops. Usually I, I, I notice that kind of thing, but not this time. Anyway, this time it would be The Rock, who is Dwayne Johnson, whose, whose name I think is spelled this way. So there we go. All right. And let's see. To be an omen of is to bode. Something could bode ill or, or bode well, and that would be an omen, a good omen or a bad omen. Uh, boring. And here again we have our brackets indicating a yawn maybe there we go oh sure as shooting by gum you might say sort of a, a quaint quaint oath and then a rowing blade is an oar so in a in a rowboat finished school could be to graduate there we go make beloved to make something beloved would be to endear that thing to somebody or a person like pots made by, oh, certainly simply ceramic. Pots made by a potter are ceramic. It was the simplest possible answer to that clue, and I didn't think of it at the time for some reason. To flip one's lid is to uncap something. So here we have a question mark indicating a bit of punnery, because we you'd see flip one's lid, and you'd think of the English language idiom to flip one's lid to, to sort of, you know, lose your temper or to, to go nuts. But here, where the pun makes it more literal, we're simply flipping a lid on a container. We're uncapping it. Uh, Batinskis are uh, yentas, so people who sort of pry into other people's business. And um, yeah, Batin Batinsky is sort of a, I suppose it's sort of intended as a vaguely kind of Yiddish or Slavic kind of uh humorous corruption of someone who butts into things. Lacking fizz as soda. Flat soda would be lacking its fizz. Pharmaceutical watchdog organization is the FDA, I would think, the Food and Drug Administration or agency. And info for a computer would be uh, data. Someone not strict would be lax or, or a, a rule that isn't strict could be a lax rule. And then lumberjacks swing axes at lumber. Skin blemish slangily could be a zit on your skin. And then if you, uh, more foggy would be hazier. It could be hazier outside, or you could be in a hazier frame of mind, maybe a foggier frame of mind. Avid, okay, so here's our revealer for our theme. Oh, right, and Mr. T, I forgot about that as well. Avid fans of cinema or a punny description of 17, 31, 40, and 47 across. Well, they're movie, uh, they're not movie hunks because we've used that phrase. Uh, quite a few times in clues, so it won't be in an answer. Oh, but they're avid. Oh, buffs, movie buffs. If you're, a, you know, you're said to be a, a buff of a, in a certain area, you're a big fan of that thing. And that is appropriate to these repeatedly hunky clues because uh, these uh, actors are all buff. They're all uh, sort of, you know, strong, obviously visually strong, uh, a bodied people. Swanky like a certain Spice Girl. Um, posh, right, the Posh Spice is one of the Spice Girl names. So there we go. Recipe amount could be a tablespoon. Letter represented by a peace sign is a V. And then gotcha, you could say, oh, gotcha, I see. I see what you're doing there. Here we have, if I could turn back time, singer, that would be share. And a bit of celery or broccoli is a, I was going to say a sprig, but that's not really what you'd say. You'd say... A stock, broccoli stock or a celery stock. There we go. Great Basin people could be the Ute, uh, indigenous people. And like skim milk is non-fat. A long-barreled gun is a rifle. And Halloween disguises are masks. So let's just look at the crosses here. 
Actress Vardalos or Long, so Nia Vardalos or Nia Long. There we go. And for Pete's sake, you might say. So another uh, slightly quaint oath, less quaint, I would say, than by gum. And um, for Pete's sake, and there we go. So indeed, that was a pretty gentle puzzle, I would say. And it did uh, it did rely on knowing four hunky co- co-stars of various films, Jason Momoa, Channing Tatum, Mr. T, and Dwayne Johnson, all of whom you could describe as movie buffs. You may also know their names if you yourself are a movie buff. Uh, so there we have it. That was the Monday crossword. And there were, I suppose, a fair amount. There were, we had a few other kind of movie-related people. We had two Nias and one. We had uh, Liv Tyler. can't remember if we had any others, but... Um, but yeah, we often get a little, oh, Cher has actually was in films as well. Um, so there we go. Anyway, that was the Monday crossword and I hope you enjoyed it. It was, it was again, as, as promised on a Monday, fairly gentle and approachable, which is what we like to start off the solving week. So I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back tomorrow for the Tuesday edition of the Daily Solve for the Tuesday crossword. So do join me for that. Should be another relatively comparably challenging puzzle to this. Uh, But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Monday. Take care. Mm